I've often heard it said in churches, our church doesn't disciple people. And what they're talking about is a part of discipleship. What does biblical discipleship look like practically at the local church level today? What ought it look like? As followers of Christ, as members of churches, how do we go about making disciples? Where I would start is this. We as churches must get back to putting a high priority on the study and application meditation on God's Word. It has to happen there. That's where it's got to start. Okay, so one of the features of my book I talk about, it's a key feature in discipleship, is we have got to elevate God's word again to the priority of what it is. It has to be our standard of faith and practice, and, and not just in theory and not just in word, but in practice. How often are you in God's word? How often are you personally studying it? How often as pastors are we preaching it? Jesse, I know you, you know me. When we preach, we start and we start and we tie our message to God's word. There's so many pastors that are not just being honest with you. They're up there telling stories the whole time, cracking jokes. They're off on everything else under the sun. Get back to the word. That's that's where it's got to start. It has to start with the word. Okay, but then in practice, so that's that's my overall challenge for the church. So oftentimes, like in a, a small group or a mentorship group, we'll talk about sports. We'll talk about the weather. We'll talk about our favorite sports team losing, which is a sensitive subject to me tonight because my Philadelphia Eagles got pounded <laughs> yesterday. So the bottom line is we talk about all these other things, and then the actual study of God's word is like five minutes in there. Okay, that's not discipleship, okay? It has to be rooted in the Word. So I think that's the overall main statement I'd wait. Now, getting into practice of what this looks like. I see that there's, in the church, there's four main avenues, okay? And it comes out of Jesus's ministry, okay? There's four main avenues for the church. I go into this all in the book. But the first would be the preaching ministry, the second would be the teaching ministry, and I'll explain all these in a moment. The third would be small groups, and then lastly is mentorship. Okay, so if I can say it this way, each church is going to be able to do as many of these depending on the quality of the leadership they have, the size they are, so forth. Okay, that's going to dictate a little of this. I've pastored everything from churches of 30, 35 people up to 400 people. And there's certain things you can do in certain churches. You just can't do them in certain other ones. The ideal goal would be to do all of these. Okay. But if you can't do all of them, do as many of them. All right. I've often heard it said, and I'm kind of circling the wagons, just I'll get to your question, but I think it's important to highlight some of these things. I've often heard it said in churches, our church doesn't disciple people. And what they're talking about is a part of discipleship. Okay, when I teach my classes in seminary, the concept of discipleship is more of an umbrella term. Okay, it's kind of a blanket term. Underneath that term is spokes or ribs or supports. Okay, now, not every church can do all the supports. But when Jesse opens God's word... When you think of discipleship is learning from scripture, internalizing it so it changes the way I live. That's done through the preaching ministry. Okay. As you open God's word and challenge the heart, there's a level of discipleship that happens at that level. Now, granted, it's not the most personal, okay, because we got an appropriate right to my life. But there's certain things Jesse can cover in discipleship on a broad scale from the pulpit. So the pulpit ministry is the first avenue. Then you have your teaching ministry. That's titled ABFs or Sunday school or depending on college ministry, teen ministry, where you're in God's Word studying it together, usually in a classroom setting. So when you go back to the pulpit ministry, exemplified in Christ's ministry, you had Jesus and the crowds. There were many messages Jesus preached to the crowds, to the audience, to the broader disciples. 
In the teaching ministry, there's a lot of times Jesus would teach the 70 or the 72, okay? And and he taught a more specific group. And there was a different level, a deeper level of teaching. There was a deeper level of even service. And so some of our ABF, some of our uh, Sunday schools are you know, ministry teams, but that's another level of discipleship in a church. A third avenue for a church is small groups, okay? Now, there's some caveats there with small groups. They they can be very effective. Sometimes they can get off the rails as well, so there's got to be some governances played on there, but small groups is a critical part of discipleship in that I can get more personal. I can, I can talk to couples, Couples can bounce things off of each other, or a group of four or five of us can talk through things on a level that I can't talk at the preaching ministry. Does it make sense? Like, Jesse can't come down on the second row and say, hey, what does this look like tomorrow at your workplace? Okay, you might be able to, but that's probably going to offend a few people, all right? (laughs) So when you get to that small group, it becomes more personal. So a healthy church, obviously, is a strong preaching ministry. A second avenue is a strong teaching ministry. Third avenue is this idea of a small group. You see that exemplified with Jesus when he's talking to the 12. And then you have this final avenue where you get real personal, and that's mentorship. That's one-on-one or one-on-two, one-on-three. Uh, once you get above three or four, now you move into small groups, but this could be one with two. I would put, you know, a lot of people go, where do you put counseling, you know, marital counseling? Right here, okay? Marital counseling is specific or advanced discipleship where I just had targeted on specific issues in their marriage or in their home. And so mentorship is that one-on-one, one-on-two, one-on-three kind of a relationship where now we can get real personal. What does scripture look like here? What sins are we struggling with? How does I, you know, I'm struggling with this issue and we set accountability and so forth. And you see that exemplified with Jesus with the three, uh, where you have his inner circle. And so you see all four exemplified in Christ's ministry. I think a healthy church will do as many of those as they can. Okay. Again, I can't, I, this isn't a blanket. Every single church needs to do all four. It depends on where you're at. If you don't have folks that can lead small groups and folks that can do one on one mentoring, maybe it's the first two right off the bat. But in a larger church setting, a healthy church will have a strong preaching ministry, have consistent multi tiered teaching ministry, will have small groups that are taking place on a regular basis, and will have one on one mentoring, counseling, challenging, so that a believer is growing in all areas of the walk. So, in a church setting, those are my challenges coming out of putting the authority of scripture at the highest point. We've got to be studying the Bible in all of these settings. 